People, it pains me to admit this, but I did a stupid. So yeah, uh, basically what it amounts to is I just recently picked up this Psyonix Aurora, uh, the black edition, the back country where it came with all the extra kit and stuff. And uh, this is a digital night vision action cam and uh, can be mounted to a helmet which is why I ended up with this piece of shit. Um, but, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, that's not night vision. And it's not. But it also most definitely still is. And more on that in the future. We're going to be doing some night vision content. Some thermal content. Huge shout out to ATN. Make sure you check out ATN. I will pin a link to them in the description box below. Uh, they were nice enough to send me out a bunch of night vision and thermal stuff, as well as the X Sound Ear Pro, which uh, I'm going to see if I can't rig up to this helmet here because I like these a lot. And these are actually truly omnidirectional. Uh, you can actually tell where the sound is coming from, unlike Escape from Tarkov. Either way, this thing is super sick, and I'm really stoked on it. It's going to be awesome for the channel to be able not only to use it as a monocular or hand it off to someone else to use as a monocular while I'm running this one or something else or whatever it may be, uh, but also being able to record all the stuff that we're doing in the dark that you wouldn't be able to see without something that's sensitive to the IR light spectrum, and this definitely is. Uh, and... It records audio, it records video, and, you know, so I've got it right there, helmet mounted. You can see exactly what we're seeing, and I think that's going to be sick. But, anyway, this not being a PVS-14 or an NVM-14 or a whatever, uh, AGM, Wolf-14, whatever it may be, and uh, more on that stuff in the future for sure, but... This being what it is, you know, this this cost me five hundred and sixty nine dollars uh, after taxes. It was, you know, six something, you know, low sixes. Um, but now you can get them for even four ninety nine and a little bit cheaper on Amazon. I think the price just dropped conveniently after I bought mine. Uh, and then Kyle picked one up, the old bush wookie. So now we're just increasing our night fighting capabilities, or at least our night movement capabilities. Um, and it's definitely capable of doing such. So that's why. I wanted to figure out a way to get it mounted to this helmet. This currently is running um, the ATN Thor on it, or the Odin. The Thor is the rifle scope, excuse me. This is the ATN Odin LT 320, so this is a, a, a 2 to 4 magnification thermal optic. It's helmet mounted with their proprietary uh, helmet mount, and the mount itself costs 250 bucks. I think the thermal itself costs six to eight hundred bucks but it's absolutely awesome i'm extremely impressed with uh the capabilities of thermal and i think in a lot of situations honestly um it's a better tool than night vision or even you know whether it's digital or analog uh personal opinion you know it, everyone's mileage may vary or whatever but i you can't really hide from a thermal at least in the woods right so I don't know. Uh, makes a lot of sense to me. But either way, night vision, recording capabilities, whatever. Um, wanted to be able to mount it to the helmet. So pretty much you have a rhino mount, which obviously this is not a real rhino mount. Okay, this is a, a fake, a clone, a replica. I thought it was sweet, people. It's never sweet, people. Buy once, cry once. Or cry a bunch of times if you buy a bunch of times because you're buying junk we'll talk about this here in a second but that was going to be my option i have a j arm coming uh that bolts directly into the uh the little tripod mount there and then it will actually hang the monocular off the helmet slightly crooked but you can invert the image and it's definitely workable um but you would run that you'd run the j arm off here uh in your rhino mount clips in and then it's adjustable for your pupillary distance or whatever it is um you know how you want it to sit on the actual helmet it would be more like this and uh, how close and far you want it from your eye whatever hold it securely i mean this thing it's <laughs> it's utter junk i paid 30 dollars for this people um because my idea was being a pleb, I guess. And uh, since this is not an NVM-14 or an AGM or a PVS-14, and it only cost me 600 bucks roughly, I was thinking, you know, that 
I might not be using this for go time scenarios, uh, and I'm just going to be messing around with it on the range and, and making content with it and showing you guys some stuff in the dark, and uh, that maybe I didn't need to get a real Rhino, which would run you about $250, bucks, um, unless you get a used one, you get a good deal or whatever. Um, I didn't want to have to get a Wilcox, which would cost, you know, three to 500 bucks. Um and that's just what it's going to amount to. So uh, either way, that's fine. You know, you should be running the better kit. Uh, this is a lesson learned, though. That This is 30 bucks, okay? And I figured, hey, it's a simple mechanism. It is made out of aluminum or pop metal or something, but it is metal. Most of the housing is metal. Uh, this piece back here is plastic. This is what interfaces into the helmet. We'll show you here in a second. And then, obviously, this is where you would mount... Um, your J-arm too, and it comes off, you know, to the side, and then your monocular would be sitting like right here over your eye. Again, it's adjustable, whatever, but this is supposed to stay put, okay? This is this little lever right here, how it works. Uh, there's a spring on the inside, if you can see that, and that's pushing up against, or should be pushing up against this detent that would push this lever forward, locking it into whatever notch, you know, for your eye relief or whatever it is, um, you know, where you wanted it set. So that would be pushing, giving tension on this piece and clamping it in. This, if this was the only issue with this mount, mount I could have jimmy rigged something and got it to work. Um, you know, again, it's not a long-term solution. This thing obviously is not made well. And again, for 30 bucks, what do you expect? I don't know what the hell I expected. I guess I figured it might be good enough. I figured, oh, it's just an airsoft thing. They're using it. They get down and dirty in airsoft. You know, it's, it probably hold up at least for a little while, at least for, you know, some demonstrational purpose type of stuff. And it can't even do that. Um, this, I would have been able to electric, you know, electrical tape or duct tape or whatever on each side to act as like a, a stop and keep it in the position that I want to. That's fine. Whatever. Doesn't matter. I can still do that. However, this mounting to the helmet doesn't mount to the helmet. Okay. So, um, we're going to show you how this works or how it's supposed to work because it doesn't work. But quick little look at the helmet here. Uh, this is the Bowtech Long Fry. It's level 3A. It is a ballistic helmet. Uh, you got your arc rails and stuff, a little Surefire IR beacon and admin light. Also running the T-Rex arms, uh, you know, Surefire battery pack on the back there because this ATN uh, Odin does take uh, one CR-123A to work and uh, lasts for a couple hours, so that's sick. Uh, another quick little note, too, is that with, you know, thermal like this, digital thermal, as well as digital night vision, um, I got a lot of bright lights on in the studio. These devices could be on... Um, and, and exposed to that directly, only a, a mere, you know, few inches away, perhaps even in certain circumstances, depending on the angle, and it not be affected whatsoever. With traditional analog night vision, you'll burn out your tubes. So there are pros and cons to thermal and digital night vision by all means, but that's a whole separate video and a whole separate video on the helmet setup and uh, all the different setups I will have here in the future. But anyway, Standard helmet, uh, mounts from the front, clips in, you know, this little button is like your release tab, so you push that in, and and you're out. So, uh, we'll give you a look at that and how that works. So, you have a little nub up here at the top, which interfaces uh, in the top shroud of the helmet, and then you also have the little locking tab on the bottom. You see how nicely, you know, machined that is, how smooth it is, how it goes in and out, how it's supposed to when I hit the button. It's also got little uh, shims here to add tension back here, little rubberized um, foam style shims so that it hugs the helmet tighter. Um, that being said, there's still a little bit of wiggle. You know, there's a there's a little bit of wiggle in the mount, but it's definitely doable. I can add more shims. I could tape it down. I could do whatever um, if I don't want it to move at all. But it's not going to come out of there. It's safe, secure, and ready to get down to business. All right, now let's take a look at uh, this Rhino, but definitely not an actual Rhino. Right? Could you imagine? Could you imagine just running through the woods, not only making this noise, but just having your PVS-14, your your whatever, just jostling back and forth like that because it doesn't hold on its own? 
absolutely absurd absolutely absurd but all right so let's take a look at the actual helmet mounting interface here on the rhino you'll see up or again rhino like substance i wouldn't even say it's a rhino like substance it's a rhino inspired substance um so you have the same little kind of locking collar uh shelf you know here on the top of the unit that clips into the top of the shroud on the helmet and then you have the same well not the same but you have a uh somewhat similar idea at least and you can just tell with the up close look at how shoddily this is constructed this, these are like brass rivets and eyelets and shit and pins like what what is going on people um, but again i'm the dumbass that bought it for 30 bucks off amazon i thought it would work i thought it would work and i think i thought it would at least clip into the helmet and be able to hold to the device the device is not very heavy and uh, I would be able to walk around in the backyard and see stuff in the dark. But no, spoiling my fun, China. Because uh, look at this. First, look at how uneven and jagged the locking mechanism, the little tab, is on this. This was how it was out of the box. It was broken like this out of the box. Or not even broken because it's fully finished. They sent it out like that so that's fine i do whatever it's china i expect it here is the uh the what you got to be careful if you have your finger too close over here all these things are sharp everything is sharp on this so and because it, it takes a lot of force i'm pushing it i'm pushing it it finally snaps through and releases the little tab so you can actually get it into the helmet and then sticks out jaggedly and sharply on the other side and then you basically got to pop it back your little locking tab pops back in and uh it's now secured <laughs> it's not it's not in the least bit so just to show you guys um this is how it would mount to the front of the helmet into the shroud you put your little locking tab up there bring it down push this in if you can Let's see. Let's see if I can actually even get it. Well, it doesn't matter because it's out. It went in. It went in um, without me even pushing to depress that locking tab. And it, it's not in. There's no way that this will ever mount to this helmet. And I'm probably chewing up the inside of this using it because uh, it is so sharp and jagged and ridiculous. This is aluminum. So, I mean, it should be fine, but it's definitely wearing the, the finish off of it and whatever. I don't care. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, this is literally useless. Um, I threw away all the packaging. I'm not going to even waste my time returning it. I mean, it's just junk. It's just, I'm going to keep it around. I'm going <laughs> to see if I could maybe fix it, for one, and get it somewhat working. Um, doubt it. Probably just going to sit there and remind me of my stupidity, which is fine. Which is fine. I'll get a real Rhino. I'll get a real Wilcox, whatever. Um, but again, check this out. So here's the ATN uh, Odin Thermal and the ATN mount. And clips in. Goes in beautifully. It's kind of hard to do behind a, a tripod, but we're in there. Works. Swing it down. Works. We're in business. We are in business, people. So, you know, not not a bad option whatsoever. But you know what is a bad option? Is buying kit on Amazon. Um, so, again, this isn't kit. I don't see this as kit ever, and you shouldn't either. Uh, it was a toy to work with something that could be kit, but I want to test it, get out there, use it, and see what's going on. I've done a little bit of that so far, and again, stay tuned. A bunch more content on the Psyonix Aurora, as well as using the Psyonix Aurora in the future. All the ATN stuff, the thermal, the night vision, the ear pro, hopefully we can get it mounted to the helmet. And again, huge shout out to them, um, but do not buy life-saving equipment or that kind of stuff off of Amazon. Now, that being said, they do sell real deal stuff on Amazon. And, you know, did I buy that? No. I didn't see a real Rhino on Amazon, I'll tell you that. Uh, but I did go and now buy a $62 Rhino mount, uh, which is also a clone or whatever, but it seemed to be a nicer variant, uh, a little bit higher end. That seems to be probably, you know... For that price point, for an airsoft grade rhino melt, rhino melt, right? Well, why are we melting rhinos, dude? Um, 
Well, I'm about to melt this rhino, dude, because it's it's not even it's pot metal. I could probably melt it down with a lighter, um, but we'll see. I got that one coming in a couple days. I will see if I could even get it mounted to um, the helmet and securely. And by that time, I should have the J arm that'll interface with the Psionics Aurora, and we might have a uh, a setup in a few days time so stay tuned more content of course as always on all this stuff in the future if not i've already done some and put some stuff out on it make sure you check it out subscribe to the channel helps out an absolute ton um but if you're running any type of night vision or thermal on a helmet please please remember it needs to be secure this is not secure dude this is very insecure dude anyway um like share comment subscribe helps out a ton always fighting that anti-gun youtube al algorithm and uh make sure you check those first three links in the description box below those that help you you fight for your god-given inalienable constitutionally protected and reaffirmed but inherent by birth gun rights people uh they're forever important and constantly and always under attack and we can't trust the politicians. The politicians are the problem, people, no matter which side of the aisle they sit on. So it's up to you to do your part in any way possible. And uh, one day, unfortunately, that might mean this kind of stuff. So make sure you have it, know how to use it, and it is squared away. Anyway, all that aside, remember... <laughs>